Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working on our metal planer restoration and uh, the whole cross slide assembly that goes in the clapper box. One more little thing I need to do to, before I can put that, that back together is I need to make a new gib for it. Uh, this gib is a flat gib. It's not a tapered gib like most gibs I see in machinery. Uh, this flat gib, uh, basically there's just a flat piece of metal in there that has some set screws that you adjust uh, to get it set just right. This is really an early style gib that was on machines. The tapered gibs kind of came along later and with my metal planer being made in the 1890s uh, it used these flat gib style. So the original gib that was in there uh, was broken when I got it so basically about a, a quarter of the length uh, was just gone from it. Well maybe not quite a quarter of the length but a couple of inches of it anyway was gone whenever I got it. So uh, we need to make a new one. Now I will be making this out of a piece of Durabar and Durabar is a cast iron material. Now I have said in past videos when I've talked about Durabar it being an extruded product uh, and I had a viewer kind of call me out on that. So technically it's not an extruded product. It's a continuous cast product. Um, with an extru extrusion you basically have a die in a certain shape and you're pushing, pressing metal through that die uh, using a lot of force. Whereas in this case, it has a die, whatever shape you're doing, but instead of using a lot of force, they're just putting molten metal in the top and uh, it's just kind of going through that uh, to create that whatever shape they're doing. And most of the Dura bar was either done in bars uh, like rectangular bars or either round bars and then you machined out what you needed. Regardless, this is a gray iron material. It's just a uh, continuous cast uh, product rather than ha having to make a pattern and having it poured uh, like you would normally do. So I had previously uh, cut this out over on my horizontal mill. I had a piece and it was a little bit wider than I needed. I cut it to the roughly to the proper thickness, let, had a little bit of material in there for machining. Uh, but today's job is machining it and we need to square up the corners. Actually one side has a little bit of a dovetail piece on it and then the thickness is, uh, I can't remember what this piece is, but it's, it's I, I'm going to have to machine about half the thickness off of it. This was the thinnest piece that I could get and it's uh, quite a bit thicker than what it needs to be. So we're going to be doing most of this work over here on my Wells Index vertical milling machine. Let's get at it. So to start with, I think I'm going to try to get these uh, sides kind of squared up a little bit. Uh, like I said, I've got a little bit of extra thickness on there, not much. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and clean them up parallel. Notice again, we have a dovetail on this side. I will cut that in a, another operation. But right now, I just want to basically get some nice uh, parallel surfaces so that I can grip this in the vise. Uh, as it is right now, I'm not sure that it would grip properly in the vise. So we want to make sure those are parallel. So I got, got some parallels here put behind this. We're going to drop this down in the vise, tighten the vise up. I have a little bit of material sticking out on each end. And again, I just want to touch that side up, clean it up, and we'll flip it over and get a parallel cut. I've got a face mill in here. Uh, we're going to use that to mill across this. Uh, Start it up and I just touched off on, I'm going to make a little light pass going across it. it. Really doesn't need a lot to clean it up. Kind of see where that's at. This is uh, the rough cut that came on it when I got it. Basically it looks like it was uh, cut on a bandsaw, I believe. But it does vary in thickness in different places. All right, that did clean up all the way. So uh, we'll let that finish feeding on out, flip it over. I got a little bit of a chatter down on the end uh, where it's hanging out, but not bad at all. Finishing there looks great. And we're gonna just flip this part over now, put it back down on those parallels, and we should get a fairly parallel cut here. All right, that's good. And we'll just raise it up about 10 thou and come back across. Uh, 
All right, that cleaned up again. Got just a little bit of a area down on the bottom that we're gonna have to take another pass on this before we're through to get it to the proper um, thickness. And uh, we'll do that in a later step. Right now, I'm just trying to get it where I can uh, get it clamped, start working on the, uh, the thickness here rather than the width. All right, and we're ready for that now. I'm going to get some of that out of there and we're going to go into a little bit wider uh, parallels here and we will clamp our part in like such. Just tapping it with a lead hammer and uh, make sure it's seated down nice and flat on those parallels and take a pass across this way. Let me get my height of my cutter going here. I'll just, uh, basically I'm just gonna drop that down until it touches. And we'll take a skim pass on there. Skim across. I'm just going to take a couple of foul, a little light pass, and come back across this. That's more than a light pass. What's going on here? I see the problem. Did y'all see that when I came off? There's a nut up under the bottom here that tightens that on there and evidently it worked itself loose. I just put this face mill on this cutter or on this arbor rather, and uh, I obviously didn't get it tight. Nobody's fault but my own here. All right, hopefully that will Hold it in place. We'll uh, reset that zero. Take about 25 thou. All right, that's much better. Old Bozo almost ruined the day there. Let's uh, continue on. Another 25 foul. Twenty-five thou seems to be cutting good. I could probably take a little bit more, but with this uh, unsupported end, I'm gonna be a little bit conservative and just take my time. Uh, I'm going to get that end down here cleaned up where we uh, mess that up. Like I said, we got plenty of metal to take off, so no big deal. Once we get that cleaned up, I'll flip it over and uh, we'll take it the rest of the way on the other side, get it cleaned up in parallel. All right, we got our uh, boo boo out of the end down there. And uh, I'm ready to flip this over and we'll get the other side done. So this will go to the surface grinder before it's all finished. So I'm not worried about perfect finish on this right now. Um, let's see if I can go to just a little bit wider parallels here. I ha it's only gonna be gripping it by a tiny amount, but I'm gonna need that to get it to the right thickness here. So. All right. 
So we haven't machined this other side yet. So I imagine it's going to be a little bit rough, but basically 350 thou and about 365. And we are shooting for, uh, let's just say 250. I'm going to assume there's a little bit of wear on there. So um, we got about 100 thou to come off. We'll uh, drop this down, get that more or less zeroed. And let's take a pass. You can see our varying thicknesses there. We're not even touching right now. And start sticking back up on the end. Let's go in here and check our thicknesses again. So looks like we're right at about 300. 320, 310, 310, 305 roughly. And a little thicker out on the ends. That's just where this thing's uh, vibrating a little bit. So uh, going to 250, I still got about 50 thou. I think I'll take another about 40 and uh, that'll leave me some metal to take off over on my middle machine. I'll just take two 20 thou passes and uh, we'll call this done. I'll do that off camera. We're over on the surface grinder now, getting ready to actually make this flat. So uh, on the milling, we were just rough milling. And again, because of the way that I had the ends not supported, it was actually flexing a little bit on the end. So what I ended up with is the ends are about 30 thousandths thicker than the middle, but again, no problem. We're going to get it flat here. Now I brought it over here to my chuck and it's sitting fairly flat on that side. But I want you to look, hopefully you can see this when you look on the other side, you can see that, that loop in there. So I'm going to put the flatter side down on the chuck on the surface plate. We'll mag it in. We probably sucked it down in some places. We're probably going to have to flip it a couple of times to truly get it flat. Uh, but I'm going to start by getting these ends cut down uh, where it's more or less touching all the way across from one end to the other. Then we'll flip it over, uh, get that side flat. And then, and then I guess, like I said, just flipping back and forth until we get it where we want it. So uh, let me get my surface grinder oiled up and ready to go here. We'll get the wheel dressed and we'll just start doing some grinding. I'm starting by just taking some fairly heavy cuts on the ends. We got a fair amount to come down. Um, doing about three thousandths per pass here. And we'll dress the wheel once we kind of get it more or less clean and get more of a finished cut on there. But right now, just trying to get it uh, roughed in here. I'm not sure how good you can see this, but it's cleaned up all except for just a little small area right here in the middle. Now, before I go ahead and get it completely cleaned up, I got enough surface area now that I want, what I want to do is I want to actually flip this part over and uh, we'll mag it down from the other side. And what I'm trying to do is if there's any spring left in this uh, part from where it has uh, just the tension in it. I want to try to grind that out. So I'll probably flip it over a couple of times. And if you look right now, you can see it's, it's kind of high in the middle. It's sucking down. Uh, it's it's on, touching on the ends, but it's, it's sucking down in the middle. Watch that when I've turned the mag on. You, did you see it flip down? So anyway, we're going to go ahead and hit this side just a little bit. And I'm, it's just going to be a matter of flipping it over and over taking light passes and uh, until we kind of get it where it's, it's fairly flat. Doing a long thin piece like this can be a little bit tricky, but uh, you kind of get the idea. So uh, not taking much off, just going to skim off a couple of thou here, uh, get it where it's basically clean, then we'll flip it back over again. I'll redress the wheel and everything on my final passes. I'm still considering this 
kind of a rough pass here. I think what I'm gonna do is just kinda, I'm just gonna feed down a thou, that'll be plenty, and we'll let it come across. I'm going to go ahead and redress this wheel. Doesn't need much. And I've already turned my part over down here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and touch off on that again and take about another thou off of it, try to get it cleaned up completely. And we'll flip it over one more time, put a finish pass on the other side, and I think we'll have this uh, pretty well done. All right, I think we're good on our depth. I'm just gonna make another uh, blank pass across this. Actually just gonna keep making blank passes across it until all my sparks go away. And uh, once we do that, we'll have it pretty well flat on here. So probably another pass or two, just take our time. This is where you really need to take your time on your finishing. You wanna have a freshly uh, dressed wheel and just keep making flank passes until all the sparks disappear and it should be pretty darn flat. And uh, once we do that, we'll flip it over and basically just uh, do the same thing on the other side. Just uh, touch off lightly, probably do uh, half a thou and then uh, let it spark out. We'll bring you back. I think we got the grinding pretty well done. So we've got our gib blank off of the grinder now. It's measuring almost exactly 250 thousandths thick, which really wasn't critical, but it was nice to hit my number uh, nonetheless. Uh, it came out just really, really nice. While I had it over on the grinder, I went ahead and turned it up on the end and I ground uh, this side here nice and flat. So I had a, a good reference side that's flat. But the last step is we need to put a, a, a dovetail angle on the back side here. So if you look at the original you see we got an angle on there we're going to use our little randy richard dovetail cutter that he made and sent me to to me here to come in here and just undercut that over on the milling machine and to do that what i'm going to use is uh, my palette and uh, i've taken my jaw off of the front of my kurt vice and put it on the back so basically i'm just going to set this up on here it's sitting now on that the top of that jaw and we'll grip this from the back side. Now my pallet is nice and bolted down here. All right. And I'm going to take, this is a pallet that, uh, I don't remember who did this, but one of my viewers made this and sent this to me. It's really nice. We can take these dowel pins. We'll put two dowel pins in here. We'll put those on there and I can, butt up that on the, the back side uh, to get it lined up. This should be trammed in. My vise is trammed in. Now, I want to have some clearance up underneath this when this cutter comes across. So what I'm going to do is get a couple of uh, thin parallels and we'll just put those up underneath the bottom. So uh, like such and hey, well, let's just go ahead and put those back there. That will just pick it up just enough to give me some clearance up underneath the bottom. And then we'll use my clamp set here to clamp this down. And uh, let's see here, let's figure out which clamps we want to use. I use these short ones. All 
right, so that clamp is down. I'll tighten that up in here in just a minute. We'll go ahead and put another one on here. These have a little jack screw in the back that it kind of presses down against. Use one of these socket cap screws. Come in here. Screw that down. I'll tighten that up on the back. And I'll probably, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put one in the middle. It probably doesn't need it, but uh, sure won't hurt to have a third point on there. And go ahead and tighten these up real good now. Good deal. All right, we will set our dovetail cutter up here and uh, make a cut right down through there. I've got this dovetail cutter where it's just barely up off the table. The cutter uh, is not hitting the table, but it's clearing the bottom here. And there we go. Uh, come down to the end. And bring this in until it just starts to touch. Bring that to me about 20 foul. Let her feed on down through there. Bring it around this side where you can kind of see what's going on, but see it's just undercutting as it goes. It's only got one uh, cutter cutting, so every revolution is just making one cut. So I got my feed rate cut down a little bit here. Uh, we're going to pass all the way down through here, and we'll just continue making cuts until we uh, get that dovetail completely cut in and this piece cut to the right width. Continuing on here, guys. Uh, we about got it all the way cut to one side. Uh, I believe we're going to have to go in about 100 thou. We might have to continue to thin it up in this direction, but uh, we're definitely Moving in the right direction. This should be the last cut here. I'm aiming toward getting this uh, width to inch and a quarter. I measured that last one and uh, we have about 30 more thou to go. Dialed that in. So uh, we'll make this cut and we should be right where we need to be. This little pallet setup is just uh, the perfect trick for this right here. I don't get to use it very often, but uh, when you get a job like this, this pallet system is just really uh, invaluable. And now for the moment of truth, let's see if this gib fits. So the dovetail part goes down in the bottom. The top is just straight up. Let me push that in all the way. And it goes in. It was snug. Let's see if it slides. Yeah, look at there. Perfect. All right, let's see. I got this end flush. Let's look at the back side here. I made it a little bit long on purpose uh, so that I could trim it up once we got it fitted. I'm just going to take a Sharpie pen here and we will mark that. While I got it in there, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, mark where there's some little dimples for these screws that push on that to go. So let me get my transfer punches. If you're not familiar with transfer punches, these are just um, punches that are in fractional sizes like drill bits and they have a center punch in there and they're real handy for going down something like we got here where you want it to be exactly in the center 
of whatever you're working on. So I've got a punch here that fits right down there. That's a threaded hole, but it fits right in there. And I can take that and hit that, and that's going to give me the exact center of this hole. I'm just transferring the center of these holes from the from the part to the part I'm making. And I'm going to do that on all four of these. All right. And I got a center punch on each one of those. Looks like it made a little mark at the top, but I think that was just from the, the hole. But you can tell which one's the center punch hole. And we got a line there. I'm going to go to my bandsaw and we'll just cut this off and then go to my drill press. And we're just going to put a little dimple there for each one of those uh, set screws. And that'll keep the gib from sliding in and out. And it'll also allow me to put pressure and adjust the pressure on this gib uh, so that it's uh, set properly. Over on my do-all bandsaw, this will be the first uh, real job I've ever used this bandsaw on, other than just playing around with it. Let's see if we'll go that way. i got more pushing. I won't be on that dovetail. And we will cut it right off. Well, guys, I think that we about got this done. I went over to my drill press and I just used a little drill bit to give a little indention and that the screws will just have just give them a little socket to go up into and capture that and keep it from sliding out in the ends. Um, the other thing I'll comment are these are the screws that go in there and I only had three of them. Uh, one of them, of course, when it broke up the end, they took the screw out and the screws long gone. So I will be having to make a new screw. No big deal. We can do that over on the lathe. Also, while I had it, I went ahead and just uh, I scraped that in real quick. I didn't really show it on video, but uh, I just took this over to the surface plate and uh, scraped it in and had it where it was uh, blueing up pretty good from one end to the other. So it is uh, ready to go in there on the side that is uh, coming in contact with everything. We'll slide our gib in. It slides in much better now that I've done a little bit of work to it and we'll put these set screws in. I'm just going to leave one out in the middle for now. Uh, and we'll, like I said, I'll make one of those uh, before we put it all back together. I just want a little bit of pressure to be pushed on these. And those screws do kind of stick out proud a little bit from that recess, but you can see how it goes and that still slides good. Doesn't get too tight at the tops. So um, we're gonna call that job well done. And there we go, new gib finished up. That's uh, another thing checked off the list and that much closer to getting this machine all finished up and back together again. Uh, we will be doing another video, doing our final assembly on this, putting it all back together. There's actually quite a bit of stuff that still needs to be done uh, to do that and then get it installed over on the metal planer. But again, one step closer. Guys, as always, uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, those comments and are appreciated, uh, as are those thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell icon up there so you get uh, notifications when new videos are put out. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. As always, thanks for watching.